Hello and welcome to another Author Shelf board game review. This week we're going to be looking at Suro of the Seas. This is the full review of Suro of the Seas. If you want to see actually how to play and actually see sample gameplay, be sure to check out my tutorial video for Suro of the Seas, in which I give you an in-depth tutorial of exactly how to play Suro of the Seas and show you a complete game of Suro of the Seas from start to finish. At its heart, Suro of the Seas is an abstract strategy game with a theme pasted on top of which actually brings the game to life in a very fun and very pleased in the eyes kind of way. Sur of the Seas is a game for two to eight players. A player ages eight and up and plays in approximately 20 to 40 minutes. Your average play time is gonna be about 30 minutes depending on the luck and pretty much how cutthroat the other players are. As I said, Sur of the Seas is a spiritual successor to the original game Suro, which was designed by Tom McMurchie. Sur of the Seas was pretty much re, I guess the best word to use is repurposed or basically redesigned or upgraded by Jordan Wiseman. The game is published by Calliope Games and retails for about $39.99. As I said, Sur of the Seas retails for approximately $40. Of course, you usually find it online much cheaper, especially through Amazon or some of the other websites. I actually got my copy for $25 directly from Amazon.com. And I have to say, even at the full retail price of $40, you're getting a lot of really high quality components in this box set that look very nice. They're going to last you a long time, and you're definitely, definitely getting your money's worth with Suro the Seas. Artistically, the game has a very, very wonderful, pleasing the eyes style used throughout the game to give it an Asian flair from the Asian theme to the Asian writing to the Dekaiju monsters that you're basically trying to avoid while you're playing the game. The game comes with eight different player pieces in eight different colors, and these represent the ships of the players going to be sailing across the board. And these ships are actually very, very nicely detailed. Now, if I zoom in on the camera, you see that there's actually a lot of high-quality details on these ships. Definitely an extra touch they put in the game when they designed it. If you compare Suro of the Seas to Basic Suro, looking at these nice, wonderfully detailed ships versus the stones that come with the game. Now, while the stones made sense for Basic Suro, it's nice to see that they went the extra step to have these very high quality design plastic miniatures put in the game that just adds one more pleasing level to the eyes and also makes you realize that you are getting just more for your money value, especially when a game can just be considered a basic abstract strategy game. Additionally, the tiles that come in the game are very thick quality card stock. They're laminated, they're gonna last you a long time. They're fairly thick and they're hardy. Definitely going to last through people, adults playing with it, through kids playing with it. And this is one of those great games that you can actually play with kids. And I'll get further in that when I actually talk about it for the rest of the review. But the game comes with 56 tiles. And these are very good quality, thick cardstock. Not the thickest I've ever seen, but they're definitely very good quality. And they have a nice shiny laminate on them, which means they're going to last a long time. They're not going to get smudged through fingerprints and get ruined pretty quickly. Definitely really good quality. And that quality also carries over to the cardboard used for the Dekaiju. Now there's five different pieces of artwork. Each one piece of artwork is used twice. You have the double artwork for all the same similar creatures when you have the gold and the blue. And when I explain how to play the game, that actually makes sense. It's nice to see that they actually took the time to make the extra artwork for the extra Dekaiju just really adds to the eye-pleasing level that they really put in this game. They really put a lot of effort to make sure that this game looks really good when you play it on the table. And I have to give credit to Calliope Games for spending the extra effort in designing, making the game look really nice, and definitely making you feel like you are definitely getting your money's worth. Additionally, I even managed to throw in a little bit of artwork on wax paper. Again, it's a nice little touch. Definitely didn't need to do it, but you know, anytime a game company is going to throw in a little bit more inside that box, just so you feel like you're getting your money's worth is definitely a bonus in my mind. The game also comes with two different colored dice, which makes sense when it tells you how to lay out the Dekaiju. And again, I explained that in the tutorial video. But they're standard dice, they're good quality. And also the rule book, thematically, is kind of odd. It's kind of a fold out, almost like a scroll, kind of adding to that Asian theme. But the rules are nicely done. The game is not hard to understand. And you can pretty much read the rules, see how to play the game, and even look at the few gameplay examples if you have any questions. It's not a hard game to play, but definitely did a very good job with the rule book, too. Overall, I think Suro of the Seas is a fantastic value for your money, even at full retail price. I would not hesitate to buy this game a second time if I did not own it already at full retail price. Yes, I got it a great deal by buying it online and getting a discount, but it's definitely a game I would get all over again and pay full retail and still be happy with my purchase.
Every time I do a review for a game, it's very important for me to discuss family friendliness in a board game. Now granted, all board games usually have a minimum age rated right on the side of the box. It's very easy for you to read, but sometimes those minimum age ratings are not always accurate, and sometimes they need a few extra comments. Now, Sura of the Sea is listed as a game for ages 8 and up, and I think that's actually on the high end, even though 8 and up seems like a low age. Sura of the Seas is a very easy game to play and a very easy game to teach. This game is so simplistic gameplay-wise that even a 5-year-old can easily understand how to play this game. As a matter of fact, I play this game with my 5-year-old quite a bit, and he really enjoys it because the gameplay is very simple. It's roll the dice move the, the kaiju because you really don't have any control of how they move then place the towel to keep yourself on the game board as long as possible now don't construe that to mean that Suro the Seas is a basic game because there is a lot of strategy into how you play this game yes there is a lot of luck in this game also especially when you compare it to basic Suro because these the kaiju monsters do add another random luck element to the game that is not present in the basic game and in my final comments, I'm actually going to take a few moments to compare Suro the Seas to Suro, but I don't want to get ahead of myself quite yet. Now, as I said, Suro is a great, great family game in my opinion. It plays up to eight players, which is always a bonus in any kind of game that allows you to have the family gatherings, whether it's for the holidays. And since Christmas is coming, you may want to actually think about possibly picking up this game for the family gatherings. The game has a great, fantastic age range on it. You can literally play this with anybody. You could probably even put a four-year-old down and play this game. Of course they may not be great at it, but they can definitely get down, play this game, and have fun with the family so you can have a nice family group gathering where everybody's playing a game and having a lot of fun together as a family. But there's definitely enough complexity to the game that adults can have fun with it and you can even have a little bit of alcohol when you play this game and get a little more cutthroat with this game and actually intentionally try to force other players off the board and that does add to the strategy which makes it more fun for adults. But on the other end of the spectrum, younger players who aren't quite as cutthroat or who don't enjoy playing games quite as cutthroat can still play the game because you can actually play this game defensively, staying away from the other ships and just having fun, trying to stay alive, stay on the water without being devoured by the Dekaiju or run off by the other players. As a matter of fact, a really smart five-year-old who has done this a few times can kind of stay off to the side watch all the adults go after each other trying to knock each other out and then realize that they're the last player standing because everybody else has knocked themselves out and they had a nice fun game of sailing around without any other player interaction now as I said Cyril the Seas plays anywhere from, from two to eight players and it's actually one of those games that is actually really good at all those player accounts now granted this game can be very very cutthroat when you get to the higher player accounts and this game does have player elimination so depending on how you feel you may not like this game with a lot of players because it is very easy to be knocked out early in the game just through random bad luck of the kaiju or just poor planning on your part because you didn't get the cards or the tiles that you thought you may get and you can be knocked out and you can be stuck off on the sidelines watching other players play while you're not doing anything you're just basically a bystander at that point luckily Sur of the Seas is a rather quick playing game considering its player count of up to eight players even with eight players, the game is not going to go much beyond 40 minutes. The players are going to start knocking themselves out because these towers are going to get on the board, this board is going to get very, very crowded, and these Dekaids are going to start knocking out players, and you're not going to be alone on the sidelines very long. On the other end of the spectrum, Sur of the Seas can actually still be a fun playing game even with only two players. Now, it definitely has a different feel to itself as a two-player game because it's going to take a little bit longer for the players to interact with each other. Or if you have two very defensive players, you can actually play for quite a long time without either player encountering the other one or throwing tiles against the other players. That's going to force them to go down different wakes that they weren't planning to take. I definitely think Sur of the Seas is great at either player count, anywhere from two to eight players. Just it does just realize it does play a little bit differently. With eight players, the game's going to get very crowded, very quick, and players are going to start being very cutthroat towards each other, knocking each other out. Whereas on the other end of the spectrum, as a two-player game, it's kind of a more defensive kind of game. A little more surreal, I guess, is a better way to put it. And the game definitely has a different feel to it, but it's still very enjoyable. Now, before I give you my final opinion of Suro of the Seas, which is probably pretty obvious to you that I like the game, I actually enjoy abstract strategy games and anytime you have a good abstract strategy where you're throwing a nice theme, make it please in the eyes and make it good for a lot of players, I'm definitely all in. But I'd like to take a few moments to compare Suro of the Seas to Basic Suro. Now there's two major differences between Suro of the Seas and 
basic Suro. Besides for the aesthetics of uh, ships and sailing waters versus stones going along a path. Gameplay wise, Suro of the Seas instead of being a 6x6 board is actually a 7x7 board. Which goes from 36 tiles all the way up to 56 tiles. Additionally you have the addition of the Dekaiju monsters. Now the Dekaiju monsters, I have to admit they add a lot of randomness to this game that is not present in Suro. Which makes it less of a pure abstract strategy and a little bit more of a luck based game. Additionally, Basic Suro uses 36 unique tiles, while Suro of the Seas uses 36 unique tiles plus 20 duplicate tiles. And this is where I pretend I remember how to do math, and it's actually 36 unique tiles in Suro plus 13 additional duplicate tiles. So it is actually possible to play Basic Suro with Suro of the Seas with two major changes. One of the changes I'm not willing to do, but you can actually go through here, find the 13 duplicate tiles, remove them from the game, or flip them upside down and make them be in the outside border so you know that you're not using those tiles and you have a perfect 6x6 six six grid just like basic Suro. And additionally, all you have to do is remove the Dekaiju monsters and then you actually have Suro, plain old basic Suro, just with ships instead of stones. Additionally, if you want, if you actually enjoy the larger playing board of the 7x7 grid versus the 6x6 grid from Basic Suro, you can still play without the Dekaiju, and there is actually a variant inside the rulebook that says if you don't like the Dekaiju, simply pull them out, and that does make it more like Basic Suro. So at that point, the only differences there would be would be the slightly larger board, and the fact that you do have some tiles which are going to be duplicated, that you don't have that duplication present in Basic Suro. Now I make these comments to answer the question, if you do not own either one of these games, which game would I suggest buying? My answer is pretty simple, I would definitely recommend buying Suro of the Seas. Now granted the game costs about $10 more if you go for a suggested manufacturer's price, you're paying an extra $10. For that price you're getting the option of the Dekaiju if you want to add them in and add a little bit of additional variety of the game. You have the better components, and in my opinion, these are much better components. Now, I understand some people like the aesthetics of the stones, but in my mind, I like what they did here. This cosmetic coat they threw on the game, to me, looks better. So, in my opinion, it's worth spending the extra $10 for basically having the ability to play basic Suro if you like, or playing Suro the Seas, which adds in the monsters, the slightly larger board, and in my opinion, the better, more pleasing aesthetics to the way the game looks. I actually prefer Sur of the Seas to the point that if I owned original Suro and I did not own Sur of the Seas, I would actually trade in my old copy of Suro, give it to Goodwill or something like that, and go out and purchase Sur of the Seas. I personally like the randomness that the Kaiju add to the game. Granted, I understand that some people may not like it because it takes a perfectly clean, abstract game where the only variety is your card hand each turn. And it has the randomness and the filthiness of the dice, but it's something I do like. I also like the larger player board because to me it makes the game play a little bit better with more players. And that's just me because I have been able to get this game to the table with eight players before. And I think, in my opinion, the larger board makes for a better eight-player experience. But enough about comparisons. You're here to look at a review for Sur of the Seas. I like Sur of the Seas. I think it's a fantastic abstract game. I really do enjoy abstracts. I enjoy games like Corridor, which I think is a fantastic abstract game, which in a way kind of gives me the same feel because in Corridor you're playing walls trying to block your opponents. This game you're using wakes to try to block your opponents. And my oldest eight-year-old son is really into abstract games, so I get abstract games to the table quite a bit when I'm sitting down with my family, especially with my two boys. In my mind, Sur of the Seas has a lot of positives going for it. It plays a wide variety count. It's fun at a lot of those, at any extreme of the player count, anywhere from two to eight players, the game is fun. But I do want to emphasize it does play differently, so you may not enjoy it with all those player counts because there's a different game. Two players very defensive, eight players very offensive. I like how the game has a very quick playing time. I like how it's very simple to teach, very simple to play, but the game offers a lot of deep strategy. And sometimes you can be left scratching your head trying to play the alt optimal play on your turn because you're trying to fight where those Dekaiju are coming from. And you're also trying to plan ways to lay out those tiles that's going to force your opponent to go off the board because if you play a tile in front of one of your opponents, that'll actually force them to crash or to run into something else. That's actually a great strategy to play in this game. And that's where the cutthroat aspects of the game come in. Because you have now just forced one of your opponents into a Dekaiju and removed them from the game. 
So that is a warning. This game can be cutthroat, and there can be some times where you can really take advantage of another player's positioning because whether they don't have the cards they need or they had pretty poor planning, you can pretty much knock out the other players, and that is an aspect of the game I actually really do enjoy. Now, the game may not be perfect for all players, and I can personally see two negatives to a lot of people that may not enjoy the game. There are things that I personally enjoy, but I can see people not liking them. Now, the first thing is that the game does have player elimination, and there's no way around it. There's no alternate rules you're going to find for the game, at least no alternate rules that I would recommend. If you get knocked out, you're pretty much going to be sitting on the sidelines. If you're playing like a seven or eight player game, which is going to run close to that 40 minute time, you may be sitting off to the side, twiddling your thumbs or looking for a nice solo game to play while everybody else is playing and having fun and pretty much trying to knock each other out. Additionally, there is a little bit of randomness with the Dekaiju. No matter how perfect your plan is or no matter how much you think you're going to be safe, one bad roll of the dice, especially on another player's turn where it's going to move a Dekaiju in your way, and if you're unable to get that Dekaiju move before your turn comes back around, guess what? It's game over for you. And there's no strategy you're going to be able to find that's going to save you. The only thing that's going to save you is Lady Luck and her randomness. And if you can roll the dice to save yourself before you have to place a tile. I think Sur of the Seas is a fantastic abstract, abstract strategy game, if I learn how to talk today. I think it's a fantastic game with lots of replay value, quick to play, quick to teach, lots of strategy to it, and just enough randomness to be perfectly right up my alley in a price point that you really cannot have any comments or complaints about. If you're looking for a quick playing abstract strategy game that has a wide player count, isn't going to break the bank when you purchase it, and you're definitely going to be able to have fun with a large age range, anywhere from 5 all the way up to 99, check out Sur of the Seas. This has been another Off the Shell board game review. Thanks for watching. Of course, if you have any comments or questions, please leave them in the YouTube comments below. If you'd like to see more video reviews like this, feel free to make requests. Make sure you hit that like button, and thanks again for watching.